was the man that was uh, lost to you? A man. Who is that? That is Jimmy's daughter. Jimmy is your brother? My sister died two weeks ago today. Um, the Bird Girls Friday, Saturday, my nephew Jimmy passed away. He was in the hospital, his daughter was in the hospital, and his wife's in the hospital, and her sister is in the hospital. And Pam, but we, we let Jimmy go. We took Jimmy on Saturday, and Amanda passed away. Amanda, she's only 38. Laura Destin, we'll see. He had got. So there's still others in the hospital. Amanda, uh, Pam's still in the hospital. And she was improving, but they got her so dangerous, and I don't think she knows. And finally, yesterday, we talked to them and told them to stop giving her all them said that, that that's not the right way to do it. Cause well, they're just trying to make it up. Well, we, we got to know she's going to be strong enough to fight it. Because she, they got her up to do the physical therapy and she put their class because she's not over the COVID. It's just, it's just, And they're seeing as far as we know. They're seeing one of them that about college that yeah. We don't I can't even see it. Why did I bring it? Why can't they take a chance? Everybody wanna know if me and Robbie is well. Me and Robbie haven't been sick. I've been all up in it. But we're vaccinated and I wear my mask. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, no, it's not. My home phone, Debbie, is still the same. Yeah, I've never changed it. Yeah, it's still the same. 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 Yeah, it's still the same.
Good morning, church. Good morning. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Before I begin to worship this morning, I have one thing to ask. I failed to uh, to cover uh, the trunk or treat in our last board meeting, and that's the only issue I had today. So, are we interested in doing trunk or treat this year? Uh, the 31st is on Sunday, so we could do it the Saturday before. Is there interest in doing that? I take it there is no interest in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has said anything, so do we want to try to take that on or, or just let it go this year? It snuck up on me, so we just want to let it go? Okay. Well, welcome to Providence United Methodist Church. It is so good to be here this morning. I have uh, just a couple of announcements I need to make this morning. Um, there is our uh, charge conference is scheduled for next Sunday at four o'clock. It is a Zoom meeting, so I thought that we could meet in Diane's classroom and do it by Zoom if anybody wants to come. Uh, if you have a laptop, bring your laptop and, and we'll all get hooked on it together and so we can see what's going on. And let's see, here, on, Monday, on Monday mornings at 10 o'clock, we're continuing our study in Acts. And choir practice will not be uh, this Tuesday, but it will be the next Tuesday and it will be every week from there on out. So, and it's at 6 o'clock. Um, Chase Corner Ministries would like to thank the Providence United Methodist Congregation for the recent donation to our emergency food pantry. For October, we could use soup and crackers, peanut butter and jelly, uh, heaters and blankets, salt and toothpaste. And I've already covered our charge conference. And uh, does anybody else have anything else this morning? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in, in joy and in hope, gracious God. And I know that there are some among us who are also approaching you in sorrow as they have lost loved ones. So gracious God, surround us all with your love and your care. Bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is Have Faith in God, and I do have a little information on that. The hymn was written during a revival meeting in Muscovy, Oklahoma in 1934. It was a time of hardship, severe economic depression, and uncertainty in America, a lot like it is today. Uh, people were anxious and worried. The author was B.B. McKinney, who wrote more than 500 songs. The hymn, Have Faith in God. The words of the song were filled with assurance and hope. They inspired faith and trust in the God who, no matter what, rules and reigns upon his throne. They also serve as a wonderful poetic commentary on Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Let us stand and sing, Have Faith in God.
this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit on this time of giving, this time of receiving. Let our hearts rejoice in you as we return a portion of what you have blessed us with. All for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, bless these gifts and these tithes that have been so generously given by your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. celebrate some birthdays that are coming up. Um, Brent Clayton's birthday is the 7th. Teresa Hamrick's the 7th. 
Mike Carswell is the tenth. So happy birthday to all those tenths. We now come to our prayer time. Are there those that are in particular need of prayer today? I know about Kathy and Robbie and what's going on in their family. Mm -hmm. Now it's Burris Burgess. tragedies but God commanded us to be of good cheer he said do not be discouraged nor dismayed do not be afraid for the Lord our God is with us wherever we go amen we all need that word of encouragement right. uh, Bill I'll give a little update on uh, Billy Lattimore they removed his uh, defibrillator because the infection that was in his blood had, had attached to the defibrillator, mm -hmm. which they say when you, have, when you have an infection like that, it will attach to things that's right. hard in your body. So they're fitting him with a defibrillator vest that he will have to wear until they can get this infection cleared up mm -hmm. in order to insert a new defibrillator. So he's still in Charlotte and he's got a long way to go. And they're talking that even when he leaves there, he'll probably have to go to a nursing facility for some therapy. But he's holding his own, right? He's now. holding his own, other than being really confused, and the doctor says that's coming from the infection. So, thank you for that update. Anyone else? Well, how has God blessed you this week? That had to be a big thing. We're alive. We're, alive. we're alive. That's a big thing. We're, we're alive and reasonably healthy. We were able to make get up and make it to church this morning. We got to go watch the band play softball tonight. She's an all-star. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, probably embarrassing, or I hope it makes you feel special, but we need things to celebrate, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, I like splashing water around too when I'm watching this. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something funny that happened. I was fixing some uh, sugar water for my bees, 
and my bottle broke. And so I ended up with water all over me, all over the kitchen floor, all over everything. So I have, I've had fun trying to clean it all up this week because every time I have to keep mopping because everywhere, every time I find a sticky spot. So but that was funny because I walked in the bedroom. I was getting ready to, to leave to go do a visit and I walked into Jack and said, I got to change my clothes. And she said, yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, life is fun life is fun let's go to the Lord in prayer gracious Heavenly Father we give you thanks for the joy that you give to us each day we give you thanks for allowing us to remember and to lift up in prayer those who have need we thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, that you are our God and that we can come to you in times of trouble and also in times of triumph and to give you praise and thanksgiving or to ask your help, gracious God, because you are always there for us. And we thank you and bless you for that. Gracious Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. Hear the joys and the meditations of our hearts. Hear our prayers that have not been voiced this morning but are in our hearts. We lift them up to you and give us that joy which we need, gracious Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And it is in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey, Savannah, how are you this morning? You don't know? Good. Did you play a good game? Let's just take a look at this board. I want you to look at all the stuff that we do here in the church. See all the things that we do in worship? You know, we have the lighting of the candles first, and we welcome everybody in service. And then we have prayer, and we have hymn, and we do an affirmation of faith. We sing the Gloria Patre, which is Glory be to the Father. And then we take up our offering for, for the church, and we sing our dedication. We have prayers, concerns, and praises. And pastoral prayer. And we do our anthem. And we have your time. Or whoever, whoever, however many kids are here, it's their time. And then we have the scripture and the sermon. And we do the closing hymn and the benediction. That's a whole lot in service, isn't it? And I'm talking, I'm going to be talking about the service that we, uh, in my, uh, sermon this morning because I'm going to be talking about the holiness of God and we're talking about the fourth commandment today and I'm doing a whole sermon on the fourth commandment this one commandment and that that commandment has to deal with us being in church and and celebrating the day as God's day even though there are other people who worship uh, some uh, some uh, worship on Saturday and the Jewish people worship on Friday night Friday night and, and all day Saturday is their Passover or their or their uh, time with God and so people worship in, at different times and in different places but that doesn't mean that, that um, we don't have a set time for worship I celebrate my Sabbath on Fridays because I work today. Do you know today is a work day for me? And so I celebrate my time with God on Friday. You know, it's when I, I, I read my, I work on my sermon all week long, but I read my Bible on Saturday and have my private, on Friday and I have my private time with God. And, and uh, we, we either, either I'm out, uh, taking a walk, and, or I may even be out fishing or something like that. Did you ever think that you could spend God time with God while you're fishing? You can. You can, even if you don't catch a single thing. If you, if you spend, when you spend time with God, the, the day just passes, and you don't even know that, that there's been any time at all spent with God. But we, we come to church on Sunday to spend that time with God. And it's only it's only an hour out of our week. And you know, there are people that won't even spend an hour out of their week to give to God. And I think that's sad, don't you? So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that, that we can spend time with you and and that that you do talk to us, gracious God. We even though we may may not hear you and like I'm talking to, to Savannah today, but gracious God, you come, you speak as loud and soft to me as anybody. And so gracious God, we give you thanks that, that you talk to us and minister us, minister to us and take care of us, gracious Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all very much.
There it goes. I don't know how much Lana gets out of uh, what I say on the children's time, but she does. She just gives me so much joy just to be there. And she smiles at me. I love it. I'll be talking about the fourth commandment today. And this commandment to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. So let's pray. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary. to us from the chapter 20 of the book of Exodus, beginning with verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This commandment bridges the commandments concerning God and concerning us. And it's, it's the way we are to treat God. And as human beings, and how we are to treat one another. We are to keep the Sabbath and not cause anyone to work on the Sabbath. I remember my mother cooking on Saturday, so all she had to do was warm the meal for lunch and dinner on Sundays. I don't know how many of y'all prepare meals on Saturday night for Sunday, but that was, that was a habit of my mom's. And I've eaten out on Sundays, to my sorrow, but I left at least a 50% tip and up to 100% tip for excellent service. People who have, worked, who have to work on Sundays should be praised and paid for their work. The Sabbath is a holy day and should be observed as such. According to the commandment, we should complete our work in six days so we may rest on the Sabbath. And that doesn't necessarily mean we watch football all Sunday afternoon long. Some of us probably do. But it also, also remember uh, Sunday afternoons were times to go out and visit. And you would see your neighbors. And oftentimes, uh, neighbors would be sitting out on the porch. And they'd wave to you as you would go by. Or, or you would stop and, in and visit with them. We don't do that much anymore. OSHA or OSHA is an organization that is tasked to look after a worker's welfare. A person may work 10 days without a day off, but no more. I know companies that do not observe this guideline. It does not apply to medical professionals, as my mother was an RN and would work for days on end without a break. She had to work many Sundays, but would go to church if she had a Sunday off. She would pray at work for her colleagues and her patients. Understand people's need to work. And I hope they take time to worship God and work on their relationship with him on their day off and at work. I also understand businesses need to be open on Sunday. But I remember the blue laws. And do y'all remember blue laws? I remember the blue laws which forbade businesses to open till after 1 p.m. That's not true anymore. And I think it's the pursuit of the almighty dollar has superseded people's desire to follow God. It would seem to some people have replaced God with science and philosophy and with money. Two travelers were traveling on a train. One passenger was seriously reading the Bible and thinking about God. 
The other passengers saw that and mocked him, saying, The world is going somewhere, but science has taken us all to great heights. What is he to do with the Bible? What does the Bible have to do with us? And what do we have to do with God? He said to the reader, the reader of the Bible said to the other man, I am a scientist. Please come and meet me. I will explain to you about science. Then the reader gave him his card and read, Thomas Alva Edison. Many of us know who Thomas Alva Edison was. Edison had the reputation of not being a nice man, but in this instance, he had a relationship with God. It is interesting where God shows up. When one is at peace with God, when you are fully involved with him, then all seems right in the world. Christ allowed works of necessity, charity, and piety, for the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. But all works of luxury, vanity, or self-indulgence in any form are forbidden. Trading, paying wages, settling accounts, writing letters of business, worldly studies, trifling visits, journeys, or light conversation are not keeping this day holy to the Lord. Six days are allotted to worldly business. Of those days, on those days you ought to work and leave none to be done on the Sabbath day. Laziness may be a carnal, but not a holy rest. The Sabbath of the Lord should be a day of rest from worldly labor and a rest in the service of God. The advantages from the due keeping of this holy day work only to the health and happiness of mankind, for the time it affords for taking care of the soul shows the excellency of this commandment. Jesus and his disciples picked grain for food on the Sabbath, and Jesus healed on the Sabbath, all to the dismay of the Pharisees. From Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered in a synagogue and laughed and talked. There was a man whose right hand was withered, the scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there, and Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and disgust with one another what they might do with Jesus. It would seem that no matter what one decides to do, some people get upset. Even when you did do what is morally right, it is still wrong in some people's eyes. In today's world, it's hard to understand what the disciples could possibly have done wrong. However, it does show the lengths to which some descend when they dislike you. Enjoy the Sabbath with Jesus. It's his day. Devote all or as much of it as you can to him. Offer your prayers, your work, your joys, your sufferings to God. And remember, it was on a Sunday that Jesus rose from the dead. The word zakar means remembrance. Remember your Creator. Remember your redemption. Remember that it is God's holy day. Wait upon the Lord to know that He is Lord. He is the Creator of the universe. Remember means already to already exist. One day in seven is to be kept holy. All the laws of the Decalogue, and that's the Ten Commandments. 
are according to the dictates of nature, the law and light of reason and knowledge of man, excepting this. Wherefore, no other has this word remembered prefixed to it, there being somewhat in the light of every man's reason and conscience to direct and engage him in some measure to the observation of men. Why is it setting apart one day a week so important that God included it as one of his Ten Commandments. The Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, is set apart by God as a time of rest and spiritual rejuvenation. In the Hebrew calendar, the Sabbath begins at sunset Friday evening and ends at sunset Saturday evening. Of course, someone will immediately ask, why the Sabbath day? How can our relationship with God benefit any more from observing that particular day than any other day of the week? After all, Friday night and Saturday bustle with all sorts of sports, businesses, and other secular activities. Why should we be different? Isn't this a symbolic commandment we're never meant to be taken literally? And didn't Jesus ignore this commandment, leaving us free from the burden of keeping it? Remember, our Sabbath day is on a Sunday. And Sunday is becoming just as busy as any other day of the week. With ball practices, with um, sporting events, with uh, shops being open, with grocery stores being open. It doesn't seem like it's any different than any other day of the week. But these questions represent some of the most widely assumed long-held beliefs about the fourth commandment but god's commandment is simple and easy to understand why is this commandment so frequently ignored attacked and explained away by so many could it be because the challenges to the sabbath commandment are views generated by the god of this present evil world after all this being wants us to accept his views because he hates god's laws he does all he can to influence us to ignore, avoid, and reason our way around it. Few grasp the extent of society's indoctrination by Satan. As a so-called real God of this age, Satan has deceived most of humankind. The whole world falls prey to his influence. His objective has always been to destroy the relationship between the true God and humanity. He wants nothing more than to thwart people from developing a loving personal relationship with their Creator, which is the purpose of the fourth commandment. He wants to prevent us from reaching our incredible destiny in God's family. The Sabbath is vital to our relationship with God because it shapes the way we perceive and worship Him. We should remember the Sabbath, to formally worship God on that day. Otherwise, we forfeit that special understanding that God wants to develop in us by worshiping Him on that day. It is by ceasing our normal labor and activities that we are reminded of an essential lesson every week. After six days of fashioning this beautiful earth, everything in it, our Creator ceased molding the physical part of his creation and rested on the seventh day. But God is still creating. As far as I know, God has only rested one day in all of the recorded history and time. God has only rested that one day. And if we look at our, our Computers and, and our computers are able to look through the Hubble, micros, uh, Hubble telescope and, and look out into our universe. We can see God is still creating. He's still fashioning. He's still forming. He's still forming this world today. When we hear of volcanoes erupting. The volcanoes are erupting and forming new land masses, even though they're, they're also destroying a lot of out of homes and houses and even life. We need to be in prayer for people caught in volcanoes, people caught 
and fires and floods. That is, that is what God, one of God's purposes for us gathering together on Sunday morning, is to remember God's people, God's people who suffer and are facing different challenges in their life. The Sabbath is a special day to concentrate on developing our spiritual relationship with God. Although it is a day of rest from our normal routines, and we do need even physical rejuvenation, it is not a day for doing nothing, as some assume. On the contrary, the Sabbath is a special day in which we dramatically change the focus of our activity. God intended it to be a delightful period during which we busily draw closer to him. God said to the pen of Isaiah, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and all the Sabbath of the light, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, but finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shall you delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. As I said before, I remember on Sundays about going and visiting people, about them sitting on their porches and waving, or, or us stopping by friends and families' homes and, and visiting with them, or, or even the, the preacher coming out to our home and visiting with us and eating supper with us. Even many scientists once denied God's existence, but now reevaluating their position as their scientific results affirm the Bible and the existence of a creating force. Most are still not prepared to affirm the existence of God, but they should. Scientists confirm the Bible include Galileo, Francis Bacon, Charles Darwin, who said these words. I may say that the impossibility of conceiving that this grand and wondrous universe with our conscious selves arose through chance seems to me the chief argument for the existence of God. But whether this is an argument of real value, I have never been able to decide. I am aware that if we admit a first cause, the mind still craves to know whence it came and how it arose. Nor can I overlook the difficulty from the immense amount of suffering through the world. I am also induced to defer to a certain extent to the judgment of the many able men who have fully believed in God. But here again, I see how poor an argument that is. The Savior's conclusion seems to be that the whole subject is beyond the scope of man's intellect. But man can do his duty. I had always thought that Charles Darwin was an atheist. But according to this, he's not. He's, he's one who was searching and seeking answers, as all scientists are supposed to do. He was not certain about God's existence. He was unable to discount it. Additional scientists include Maria Mitchell, who is an astronomer, Albert Einstein, who said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious, the knowledge of the existence of something unfathomable to us, the manifestation of the most profound reason coupled with the most brilliant beauty. I cannot imagine a God who rewards and punishes the object of his creation, or who has a will of the kind we experience in ourselves. I am satisfied with the mystery of life's eternity, and with awareness of and glimpse into the marvelous construction of the existent world together with a steadfast determination to comprehend a portion, be it ever so tiny, of the reason that manifests itself in nature. This is the basic of cosmic religiosity, and it appears to me that the most important function of art and science is to awaken this feeling among the receptive and keep it alive. There's also Francis Collins, who is director of the National Institute on Health, along with a multitude of other scientists, all began to affirm God through their research. They are, they are confronted 
to the unexplainable. They're confronted with the, with the beautiful. They're confronted with God. God is still God of the universe and of our lives if we let him. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, God of the universe, God of our lives, we give you thanks that we have not forgotten the Sabbath day, that we have not forgotten what it means to follow you, that we have not forgotten and that we remember. We, Zakar, we remember. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Take Time to Be Holy. Let us stand and sing. forth now in the spirit and the love of our Father. Go now with Jesus, his Son. Go now with the Holy Spirit abiding with you always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>